Hello. We're at the National Portrait Gallery in London, where the art world is gathering for a very special occasion. Tonight we'll be announcing the winner of a 10-month search for a new artistic talent. Welcome to the grand final of Sky Art's Portrait Artist of the Year. Our four finalists were selected from nearly 2,000 entrants to compete in heats up and down the country. They are Louis Morris, who won in London with his colourful portrait of actor Juliet Stevenson. Selena Moat, who won at the Royal Dublin Society with her striking depiction of Father Ted actress Pauline McClynn. Nick Lord, who won at Cardiff City Hall with his macho take on international rugby player Gavin Henson. And Ewan McClure, who won at the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum in Glasgow with his accomplished depiction of Paralympian Michael Kerr. One of these artists is about to win a prize that most portrait painters can only dream of, a £10,000 commission to paint one of our greatest living authors, Hilary Mantel. The winning artist will also join the roster of artists here at the National Portrait Gallery who will be considered for future commissions. The winner will be chosen tonight by four very distinguished judges. Kathleen Soriano, Director of Exhibitions at the Royal Academy. Kate Bryan, Head of Contemporary at the Fine Arts Society. And portrait artist Taishan Scherenberg. They'll be joined tonight by a special guest judge, National Portrait Gallery Director Sandy Nan. So let's find out who's going to be the very first Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year. Welcome to the stunning surrounds of the National Portrait Gallery, home to paintings of history's most significant public figures. These corridors boast an eclectic array of artworks from Joshua Reynolds' oil paintings to Sam Taylor Johnson's video installations. And there's about to be some brand new work on display here, the work of our four competition finalists. From Friday, the 16 paintings our artists have completed for this series will be displayed here at the National Portrait Gallery, so you can come and see them for yourselves. So let's remind ourselves of how they made it this far. It all began in Trafalgar Square. The winner of the London Heat of Portrait Artist of the Year is... Louis Morris. Just so proud and happy. Um, yeah, I can't put it into words just yet. Just feeling pretty good right now. In the beginning, Louis' self-portrait divided opinion among our judges. I hate the composition. For me, it's just too mugshot. It looks like he's just been caught drink driving. He's deep in observing himself and trying to get the right tones. It's a, it's a study in concentration. It's lovely. Louis designs banknotes for a living. I dropped out of architecture school. Um, and was looking for a job, and there it was on my doorstep, and it's taken me around the world. Louis's painting technique kept everyone guessing. Hopefully she'll appear somewhere on that canvas. And to the delight of sitter Juliet Stevenson, appear she did. The sitters were allowed to keep their favourite painting. After some agonising, um, we'd like to take this one. And this work even silenced Louis's sternest critic. To create such a captivating portrait in really one inch squared of canvas, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that. OK, so let's meet the artist, Louis. Now, you won the London Heat, which was um, set in Trafalgar Square, yes. with um, not just painting next to other artists, but with the public looking over your shoulder, seeing how it's going. Uh, how, how was that? The thought that people might actually think it was entertaining to watch me paint, I, I quite enjoyed that. Well, it was fabulously entertaining. I mean, I know I'd be tempted to show off if I knew people would start I doing was fabulous too. flourishes, yes. but your, your patience and your pacing was uh, incredible. Well, I, I was getting a little bit nervous at half-time when we, there was we no all were. face. <laughs> <laughs> the winner of the Glasgow Heat is... Ewan McClure. I feel amazing. I feel really delighted in a tired sort of way. Early on, our judges spotted Ewan's potential in his self-portrait. 
I think it is one of our sort of classically trained artists yeah. and dramatic lighting and earth colours and tones, but I, 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 I like it. Ewan became interested in art as a small boy when his parents took him to the Aberdeen Art Gallery. He won a Royal Scottish Academy Award and went to Gray's School of Art. I started to concentrate on the human form and realised I really enjoyed portraiture. I'm drawn to 19th century realism, so I paint almost as if the 20th century never happened. But back in the 21st century, Ewan Sitter Paralympian Michael Kerr was impressed. I think that one really looks like me. As were the judges. That head is just so solid, mm. and it's got his expression as well. Oh, he's it's completely that is him. And they were even more impressed by his determination to win. Four hours, is, you've done a beautiful painting. Is that about the right time for you? It is. For this size? Tra training for this show, I've been doing three-hour paintings pretty much every day for a month, so... Um, wow. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> Ewan. Hello. Ewan, you're, um, you're a professional portrait painter. Now, for someone like me, when I hear that, I think, well, what, what does that mean? Do you get up in the morning and sit around waiting to get a commission? Or do you get up and paint and hope that you can sell it? I mean, how does it work? It's a bit of both. Commissions come by word of mouth. Um, they can be few and far between them. So, so you're not making stacks? Well, no, if I happened to win this, that would represent a year's salary, basically. Um, because For the purposes of this competition, you've practised painting faster. I did, I did. Do you think that will change your, your style? No question about it. I mean, this has been an amazing boost. And I had already been doing fairly regular portrait sessions just, um, just to keep my hand in. But when I heard about this, I sort of upped the rate. And yeah. I think the painting's improved. As well, that'll make more money. You'll be painting twice as many. That's it? right. It, that's right. right. The winner of the Cardiff Heat is Nick Lord. I'm excited now, now that I've sort of had a taste of working from life again and sort of uh, been around other people whilst working. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. The judges were intrigued by Nick's distinctive painting style. And he's obviously turned it after he's painted it to get these drips going that way. I like drips. I mean, they can be a bit self-conscious at times, but I do like a bit of paintedness. I hope we I get like some it. drips. Nick isn't yet making a living from his painting. I work for my dad, um, painting model railways to make them look distressed and old. So I'm painting but on trains, <laughs> toy trains. I tend to specialise in portraiture. That is my key element to my work and sort of what sort of inspires me to keep, to keep working. I'm slightly worried by Nick, who's in a world of his own with his earphones on. He's really got very little on the page yet. I'm a bit behind schedule. Um, I wanted to sort of try and get the drawing done in the first hour, but this is the hardest part, so I'm trying to get it all mapped out in proportion. So then when I paint, I can sort of just relax, but then sort of make a bit of mess and uh, have a bit of fun. But in the end, Nick surprised everyone. It's really long to get going. I wasn't scared. No, well, she, I wasn't. I just, and then the eyes came through, and I kind of suddenly realised you're really on track. I'm really, really interested to see what he does next. Nick, so I'm sort of fascinated about your day job. You paint model trains? My dad's got a model railway business, but I'm not really into trains. I just do what my dad tells me to do. Yeah. So, so yeah. painting Hilary Mantel would be a, a different sort of a challenge, wouldn't oh, it? Definitely. And your art generally is kind of, kind of feels quite modern and sort of urban. How, how do you feel about painting a, an establishment figure like that? To sort of have like a modern sort of contemporary edge, like you say, that my sort of painting has can sort of just make it um, just give it like a new sort of life as such. Yeah. Um, it's a bit of a challenge and it, um, it's one that I quite like because I, I don't want it to sort of be a traditional portrait as such. Well, we may see it. Yeah. The winner of the Dublin Heat is Selena Mowat. It's amazing. I can't actually believe it. <laughs> Great. Selena's portrait of Pauline McLean, best known as Father Ted's Mrs Doyle, impressed the judges with her bold use of colour. This fantastic 
bold, brassy red watercolour. Yeah. I love that. I really like it. She's really, really engaging with the viewer yeah. as mm. well. I tried to show off by comparing her work to Picasso's. This is your blue period. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was my brother originally that told me about the competition, um, and I kind of dismissed it. And then I got home, and um, my arts counsellor sent me an email suggesting I should apply. So I did, <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> She started just with one colour, blue, and she's getting to the point now where she's getting ready to add the colour. So she's really shining, standing out for me. All you can do now is ruin it. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Luckily, Selena didn't lose her nerve. To get that lightness without being literal, I think that's yeah. what's really special, isn't it? It's as if she knew her. Selena. So that, that day in Dublin when you realised you were going to be painting uh, Mrs Doyle, how, how did that feel? That was great. She's a fantastic um, figure in Irish TV, so it was great. Yeah, you made a brilliant job of it. And you're a professional artist now. Was there a moment, a sort of a flash, when you thought, I want to be an artist, or was it just a gradual thing that, 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 that crept yeah, up on yeah, you? Yeah, I think it was more gradual. I think my brother, my older brother, was making art, and I kind of followed him a lot as a kid. Our four finalists here tonight are being given an opportunity that most artists can only dream of. From this Friday, their paintings will be displayed here among the greats. I've been joined here by the judges, Kathleen Soriano, Kate Bryan, and Taishan Scherenberg. Now, Ty, you yourself are a portrait painter. What would it be like to paint the portrait of Hilary Mantel? Well, I've always thought she's a fantastic looking woman. I'd love to have a go painting her. But what's great for, for a portrait artist, if, if it's not only an interesting face, but there's an interesting life behind that face. And if you think, you know, Hilary Mantel's eyes, I get the feeling in sort of reimagining these historic characters in her novels, she's almost like seen them. And there's, there's, some, there's some strange mystery in her eyes. And it'd be nice to get one's uh, paintbrush out and try to capture that. Also, it's going to be in a public collection, which is any uh, portrait artist's dream, you know. So it's, uh, a lot of people will see it. And I think the money isn't too bad either. <laughs> Kate, you've been on this journey with the other judges and you've seen the people who've been competing and the four finalists. What's that journey been like? It's been extraordinary. I mean, I think we're really thrilled with the four finalists that we've got. They're all very different. They've each got their own unique perspective and point of view. Selena sees the world in colour. I mean, it's glorious seeing the way that she sees people in, in this sort of joyous, colourful painting. It's, it's lovely. And Ewan is someone who is, knows exactly who he is as a painter. You know, he exists in this capsule, classical bubble, and he loves it. He loves it there. He's very happy and comfortable there. And he's a, you know, he produces the goods. And Nick is a young man who's incredibly fresh and contemporary, and he uses this really quite thin painting style to do things which are really weighty, and that's unusual. And Louis, I mean, that man's a genius with composition. That's all you can say about him, really. Now, Kathleen, if you've watched the different process of the painting, something as a curator you don't normally see, what have you learned about how artists go about building up a painting? Well, I've been phenomenally impressed by their dedication, their endurance, the fact that they can work in that environment and produce something under such pressure with such focus and a sort of a singular vision. That's what's impressed me the most. I mean, it was a fantastic honour, really, to be able to watch so many artists working at the same yeah. time, creating these portraits in front of our eyes. So it was just a huge honour, the whole thing, really. It's very impressive. Thrilling. It yeah. has been thrilling, hasn't it? Thank you all. Now, in a moment, we'll be meeting tonight's special guest judge who will be helping our judges make their final decision tonight. But before we do, let's remind ourselves what happened last week. Our judges sent our four finalists to Paris, the art capital of Europe, for inspiration. Selena and Nick were asked to work on their drawing technique and attended a life class. How are you getting on? Yeah. Get in there. Yeah, I don't think I've left enough space for the feet. Ewan and Louis, whose painting style is more traditional, were asked to seek out some more contemporary references for their work. I hope the judges appreciate that I've taken my um, very Luddite old master painting into the 21st century. They were then asked to paint model and muse Sophie Dahl. I'm Sophie. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi
Selena. Posing is a discipline in that you would really get used to holding positions. For, I've got one hip higher than the other from years. <laughs> kind of throwing one hip forward. Louis worked in his tried and tested fashion, working blocks of colour onto the canvas. I'm just thinking two days, two days, two days. The judges have been critical of Selena's tendency to focus on the face, so this time she incorporated the background. The chair is really frustrating me. Ewan went for the same composition as he had with his painting of Paralympian Michael Kerr. It's kind of a composition which I find compelling. And once again, Nick got off to a slow start. I'm still in pencil. <laughs> <laughs> just about to bend the eye. <laughs> Back in London, the artists unveiled their work to our judges. I think there's a lovely sparsity to it. Yeah. I love that. For me, this is exactly what I was hoping you were going to do. Your Braver. marks are slightly different, yeah. aren't yes, they? Yes, they are. I was just the looking marks. down here. They're, 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 they're braver. They're not so uh, tentative and delicate. Wow. wow. That is such a contrast. I'm really intrigued now. Yes. yes. <laughs> Our artists have now built up a body of three paintings to be judged by. The self-portraits they entered with, the portraits they painted in the heats, and now their Sophie Dahl paintings. In a moment, we'll be unveiling their fourth and final work. But first, let's meet tonight's special guest judge, National Portrait Gallery Director Sandy Nan. Sandy, you preside over this amazing collection of paintings by the most distinguished artists. So tell me something about the company that our artists will be keeping if they have their pictures hanging here. Well, of course, at the National Portrait Gallery, we have wonderful self-portraits from Sir Joshua Reynolds right through to Lucian Freud. But, of course, also great historical portraits from Shakespeare to the Queen. Can I ask you, I don't quite understand how you get a painting here normally. Do you think of someone that you want painted and then phone an artist and say, we want to do it? Or do you see a painting and think, that's great, I'll, we'll get that in? There's a bit of both. I mean, we sometimes acquire paintings, sort of wonderful portraits that have been made, but we also commission five or six a year. And then, of course, it's about matching up. Who's the right artist for exactly that person? Somebody once said it's about making a marriage. I always think it's about perhaps just two people dancing, but it is about the relationship between the artist and the sitter. So when you're judging tonight, you will be trying to find someone who would match Hilary Mantel. Of course, mindful of what gets into a commission and mindful of that, but also against what these artists have already achieved, what they've already shown in their talent around the country. Sandy, thank you very much. Whoever wins here tonight will join the roster of artists here at the National Portrait Gallery who will be considered for future commissions. On top of that, they'll be given £10,000 to paint one of our most successful living authors, Hilary Mantel. But before the judges decide who the winner's going to be, there is one last painting from each artist to be unveiled. We asked them to take on a commission for a British institution. They were given a day of research, one sitting, and then two weeks to finish the painting. I'm incredibly excited at the opportunity to paint Lauren Cuthbertson. I've never been painted before. It is very different to having your portrait taken with camera. I think Louis really wants this portrait to read as a whole picture of me. I'm coming to see the director of the Royal Ballet, Kevin O'Hare, and find out a little bit more about his ideas for the commission. Welcome, Louis. It's good to see you. Thank you. And I, first of all, I've got to say congratulations. Amazing. Well done for getting this far. I think for me, it would be lovely to actually have a portrait of Lauren, of who she is. She's a very contemporary classical ballerina. How are you seeing the portrait? How do you think it's going to look? I'd like to portray it in her, in her room mm -hmm. um, at rest, right. I think. Yeah, no, I think it's good to have that moment of, of relaxation, but getting ready for the next performance, next rehearsal, because they're always thinking, because they can be working on at least five ballets at one time. So where do you see this portrait hanging? Is it as part of a, a larger collection? I think we'd hang it at the Royal Ballet School, because I think Lauren uh, is such an inspiration to young dancers. Uh, wouldn't it be lovely to have her there watching over the dancers and them looking up to her and thinking, this is what I could become. To me, the ballet is an alien world, but it's something that 
I can relate to in that it is a place where incredibly talented people do special things, and I just want to find out more about it. Hidden away in the depths of the Royal Opera House, I find the Royal Ballet's shoe cupboard full of unused shoes ready for performance. This is Lauren's shoe. Yeah. She's a four triple X, uh, so that's her size, right. that's the width, and she's tea maker. Um, and she has a heel pin on her shoe, so that denotes the length and the width of, of her shoe. A, a dancer is always looking for the perfect shoe. They want to have a shoe that they feel absolutely confident and at home in. I mean, they, they are a very uncomfortable piece of footwear. Yes. Completely <laughs> solid, it seems, at odds with the delicacy of the ballerina and the movement. Exactly. Just around the corner from the Royal Opera House is the Courtauld Gallery, where I hope to find out more about the artist most associated with painting the ballet, Edgar Degas. This is a very early Degas, 1874. That's the year that uh, the Impressionists first exhibited at, as a group. I think in its time, it would have been thought to have been quite a radical uh, treatment of this subject, particularly the odd sort of truncation cutting of the figures. Uh, this figure on the right here, her arm is sort of cut off. And then you can just see at the left, there is in fact another dancer, a third dancer, who's mm. sort of sliced in half. So you get this real sense of being there. The fact that the bottom half of the picture is almost entirely empty is, is, is another quite radical thing, but you just have the legs dropping into it and it allows you to focus on the feet in that way. And Degas would have made lots and lots of sketches of, uh, of, of ballet dancers sort of practicing these types of moves and would have been very, very aware of sort of the effort that was involved. Degas seemed to look for beauty in unusual ways or not conventional beauty. And um, I think that's, again, something that I'm going to try and do, something that's not obvious but manages to still um, have some beauty in it. So that's the challenge for me. Is that the way you... How would you be? How would you be? Yeah, I would absolutely be um, just... Like this. Back. And that's... Draining my legs. Draining your legs. Yeah. Oh, all right. OK. I'll be very happy here. Good, <laughs> good. Well, that's important for you as well. I love things like your headphones being on. Compositionally, I like it. I like the way it frames your face. This is very much me at rest in recovery, and I'm thrilled that we've been able to emulate that for the portrait, because I think it would be a really honest portrayal. I don't feel like I'm that's... posing for a portrait I'm at so all. I'm so glad. I I'm feel so... like you're imposing on my rest. <laughs> <laughs> the painting has a proper story and a proper narrative, although you can bring in things, um, iconography and, and things like the shoes, and, and they're important, you know, about the, the dancing and seeing the shoes and how important they are as a tool of the dancer's trade, as much as their legs and their body are. I'm just really happy to be putting paint on canvas and, and getting into the nitty-gritty of doing it and just figuring out what the painting's all about. I'm just starting to find colours that I'm happy with and relationships that I'm happy with. Um, I think I'm aware that I've got two weeks beyond this and so I'm trying to resist the urge to rush. And I feel that I've got a lot of ideas now that I can carry on to the finished picture. Done? Yeah. Oh, wow. I love the colours through that. In the finished one, I, I want to have more strength in the face and make it a bit less passive. OK. I had no idea of Louis' style, and I have no idea if this painting reflects it 100% or whether it's going to be more the finished product that will. But what I love so much is the movement that he's captured around me being so still and I'll be really excited to see once he's put in some of the more details around it I'll be really looking forward to see what he does with the finished product. I'm with Louis and Lauren Cospenson and Kevin L here from the Royal Ballet and uh, we're, we're nearly at the moment. Um, now we, we've seen on on the film some studies that you did for this as well. What, what 
basically, what's the big difference between doing studies and doing the actual portrait? I think the biggest difference is time, time to think. And all of the things that you've gathered, they sort of um, simmer, if you like, or okay. marinate. And then, so this um, is the final dish. It is, yeah. The idea. It is. OK, well, I think we should, um, we should take a look. OK, here goes. That's me relaxing. That is Lauren. I've it's seen her. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen her look that's like that. That's my chaotic room, and that's how I. Uh, that's exactly. How yeah, it's I, very Tracy Emin. That yeah. the, the whole thing. <laughs> so, how do you feel about it, Lauren? Well, it's a, he's just totally captured me at my com my complete mode of relaxation in between the chaos um, and the striving. We, you know, go at the Royal Ballet. So, I think he's done an amazing job. Actually, I'm really pleased that he's caught me out of the studio and in that recovery zone, as opposed to the usual um, portrayal of a ballerina. Well, I'm interested by that, because I understand, Kevin, that you want to put it in the, in, the, in the Royal Ballet School, and I imagined it would be that this <laughs> ballerina they all look up to every day as inspiration. But when they're coming out, they're going to say, you know, it's, it's an easier job yes. than I thought. I think they'll all be very happy to know that you can actually relax at some point. And actually, here I have my headphones on. And always, to go through and prepare for my next role, I listen to the music over and over. So I might look like a lazy snob, but I'm probably going through my next three-act ballet. Oh, come um, on, it's yeah. Abba. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I love it. I love it. I think Thank it's beautiful. Dancing amazing. Queen would be perfect, of course. Cool. It's a genius this at is, rest. This is the whole... Thing that, that the young dancers, they'll relate to it, and it's not someone who's so far away from them. I wanted this yeah. to be like a Louis, we love it, we love it. OK, all right, we love thank it. you. Next up, our Scottish winner, Ewan McClure. His task was to paint British jockey A.P. McCoy for that most traditional of institutions, the Jockey Club. It feels great to be at this stage of the competition. Clearly there's a lot that hinges on this final portrait, so I need to go and learn as much as I can about racing, and the more I've read about A.P. McCoy, the more inspired I am. It's very nice that I've uh, been chosen to be painted. Um, it's uh, something that I'm going to enjoy, hopefully. For some background information for my portrait, I'm going to the Jockey Club in Newmarket. Uh, hello. The Jockey Club moved here from London in the 1760s uh, into, onto this very site and, as you can see, is, is home to the Jockey Club's art collection. And on this matter of sporting art, uh, you're like a commission of um, A.P. McCoy. He has won champion National Hunt Jockey 18 years on the trot. Um, he has won every single major race and he is still, at the age of 39, at the peak of his career. I mean, I think what I would be looking for is capturing that physical and mental stamina. Can you tell me where it might hang? Probably to begin with, we like to put new paintings um, in sort of the main corridor because that's where they get maximum exposure. And I'm sure my colleagues uh, down at Cheltenham Racecourse and uh, up at uh, Aindree, where the Grand National is held, will want to borrow it for their major meetings. Maybe I should do a few. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Medlock, head steward of the Jockey Club rooms, explains a little more to me about the art collection. We have a wonderful collection of, as you can see in this room, hundreds of years of history. Mm -hmm. We've got the portrait of Donoghue there, and we're incredibly lucky to have this by Munnings. Not a posed one, though. Mm -hmm. It was one where he called in to see Munnings. He didn't sit for, a, for an interminable amount of time. I like that looseness and brevity, but encapsulates the... But professional. Inc incredibly professional. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you, you get stubs. Uh -huh. the, the, the one of Jim Crack. You have the two pictures in one here of the horses trialling, uh -huh. no silks, no riding line, no proper racing line being run, and then the horse goes to the rubbing house to get the sweat off him to cool him down. I can see that in terms of historical information and also just as a painting, this is a particular Stunning. treasure. Before I meet A.P. McCoy, such a racing legend, I'd like to know a bit more about him. So I'm going to chat to his good friend, former jockey Luke Harvey. I first met him, it was in a weighing room at Stratford-upon-Avon at the race course, and um, he was sort of this up-and-coming whiz kid who just sort of 
come from nowhere really, just come over from Ireland like a lot of these boys do. And we sort of just had a chat and, and thought no more of it. Obviously, I didn't know he was, I didn't know he was going to turn out to be the champion that he is. I see. So what do you think it is that sets him apart? As far as other sportsmen go, they're the sort of they're, they're in charge of their own destiny. Mm -hmm. With AP McCoy, you've got to add the equation of a horse. Yes. So the horse would probably account for say. 95% at least of that performance. So he can only make 5% difference, mm -hmm. and yet he's so much better than the other riders. Right. It's extraordinary, really. You know, he's, he's the most laid back, kind, nice guy. But mm -hmm. when that starter drops, uh, drops the handle, he's fiercely competitive. But there is just something in there that makes him, sets him apart from everyone else. Very much looking forward to finally meeting AP McCoy. I mean, after all this build up, I suppose I should be trembling on the floor, but I'm just really looking forward to meeting what sounds like a very down to earth, likeable character. How are you? Hello, very well. How are you? Hi. There's a lot of things I like you on to do. Maybe make me look like David Beckham or something would be good for a start. Uh, make my chin a bit smaller, get rid of the scars on my face. Um, I'm definitely going to be a challenge for him, that's for sure. Best of luck. Thanks very much. <laughs> Your time starts now. <laughs> yeah, it's got nothing to do with the light, you on. Oh, on. It's... Don't be cheating. <laughs> Have you thought what you would be doing in 20 years' time oh. you finally give up? The... I'm not sure what I'll be doing. In. I might become an artist. I'll see There's how you... a thought. I'll see how you get on. <laughs> so what do the fuzzy glasses do? Just what makes you look really blurry. Um, okay. But what I am seeing is the, the light and dark and uh, the general proportions of the face. Okay. Without the specs, I might start focusing on a little highlight here and an eyelash there, but I don't want uh, to be too caught up in that too soon. Okay. So what sort of size, is this the size it's going to be then? Is this the... I think I'll try and do a almost life size okay, piece. Okay, okay. So probably head and hands. Okay, yeah. yeah. In fact, to just kind of pace myself. I'm probably going to do a few studies, uh, depending on how the photos come out. I might have a few ideas and really need to see it done in order to know what yeah. the best is going to be. The other thing I do is use the reducing glass, which okay. lets me stand right back and see if the proportions are on target. I really do have to be selective now about the marks I make, because trying to think in terms of these being the final gestures uh, that pull it all together. Looking good, looking good. Recognisable, do you think? Yeah. I probably won't bother with being an artist after that, I don't think. But it's amazing how quick he can um, get so many parts of one's features into a painting in such a short space of time. Well, I'm pleased with the way that went. I think that the, the study will, will be useful for helping me judge the flesh tones. And I'll just have it there as a reminder of what something looks like when it's done from life. I think I've got them in a driven frame of mind. So, uh, you know, as I say, first is first and the rest is nowhere. So um, hopefully, he, hopefully you'll be first. I'm joined now by Ewan McClure, who's about to unveil his finished portrait of jockey A.P. McCoy. Now, A.P. McCoy can't be with us tonight as he's racing in Ireland, but Ewan and I have been joined by William Gittis from the Jockey Club, who commissioned that portrait. William, A.P. McCoy is racing all the time and breaking more and more records. What sort of person is he? Well, I think the fact that last month he reached the massive total of 4,000 winners over jumps it really is an indication of what kind of man he is. It, it does seem, though, that A.P. McCoy is quite unique, um, especially in his skills with the horse. Um, that's what sets him apart. And, and that's what you're trying to capture in this portrait? Well, in the portrait, I suppose you're looking for the determination and the, um, well, the certainty. I hope there's a look of focus um, about him. And we're going to see now whether Ewan's matches up to the standard. Are you going to unveil it for us? I just will. Well, William. No, I think that gets him. And it, I think what's important about it is, is it gets the connection between him and the horse, which I think is the, uh, the, the other thing that makes him outstanding amongst his peers. It seems to me you've got the concentration in his expression. How do you do that? Rather than engaging straight with the viewer with a penetrating gaze, he's um, 
his, uh, his mind's on something else. So <laughs> how do you feel now? You're one of the finalists. Do you feel you've made a good bid for the winner? I've done a painting that I wouldn't mind looking at. I just want something that I can um, feel reasonably pr proud of. And for the Jockey Club? No, I think it'll be wonderful. It shows the steel of the man, uh, and I think it'll fit very well with the collection. Thank you both Thank very you. much. Now, our youngest artist in the competition is 25-year-old Nick Lord. We sent him to paint war hero Lance Sergeant Johnson B. Harry. Nick began his research at the Tower of London, the Princess of Wales's Royal Regiment HQ. It feels awesome to be in the Tower of London. I've never, never been here before. Finding out more about the uh, Princess of Wales's Royal Regiment, so I'm really excited and sort of to see how that can sort of help influence the painting. I've seen for loads of portraits before, but today is a very special portrait sitting because I am in my regimental HQ. Wearing my uniform with my medal, it's a big day for me. I need to learn more about the commission, so I'm going to speak to Colonel Wayne Harbour to find out what the regiment are expecting me to do with the painting. Shall I start off by just explaining what the regiment would like to have as an end result of the, of the pool trade? The regiment has done a lot in a very short space of time to create a new character and a new history where we look back over centuries of what other regiments, our forebear regiments, have done, but actually what this regiment has achieved that is almost embodied in Johnson Bahari's winning of his Victoria Cross in Iraq. It will have to be a formal painting in the sense that it will have to be in more formal uniform and it will be uh, in oils and it will be a fairly large painting. Um, but in the sense that he needs to be formal, no, I think we'd like to avoid that. Yeah. Somehow empathising, embodying the professionalism of the British soldier in this regiment, in recent conflicts, is the key, is the unlocker. It would hang in the Tower of London, in, at regimental headquarters, in the first instance, but it might also go on display at a museum, at Dover Castle, so the public can see it. So I think we've given you quite a, a difficult task, so we're looking forward to you to, to come up with some originality and just to make it slightly different. Hi, Mark, nice to meet you. So we just arrived at Dover. I'm really looking forward to uh, finding more more information about the sort of the regiment and hopefully I'll get some great inspiration for the painting. Okay, so here we've got, you know, the various regiments of foot that we can trace ourselves back to. So going back to the earliest. The regiment's been involved in every conflict that the British Army's fought in uh, pretty much since 1662. How does this regiment link in with the Victoria Cross? The regiment so far um, has won 57 uh, Victoria Crosses and it's uh, an award to basically signify the highest level of gallantry. Uh, on the field of battle in the presence of the enemy. And Sergeant Bahari's uh, VC is very much in line with that uh, extreme devotion to duty and to his comrades. He won the award for two separate occasions. His vehicle was attacked with uh, rocket propelled grenades and heavy small arms fire when he was the lead vehicle in a convoy group and he managed to drive through um, and get his crew to safety. Um, and on the second occasion, an RPG exploded within inches of his face. Um, he was severely wounded and he carried on after this and managed to drive through the ambush, get his vehicle and his crew to safety, whereupon he later collapsed from his injuries. In my eyes, Johnson was a hero. He's an ordinary person who's done some, something extraordinary. One person who knows Johnson better than most is his best mate, Rupert Bravery. You're trying really to encapsulate quite a complex character, a person who's done hugely heroic things, who isn't uh, your typical all-action Hollywood hero in the way he presents himself but is a very humane person, but also somebody who's very sharp on his feet and quick, quick thinking. And somebody who's also got a sense of humour. And that's quite a complex thing that you're trying to bring into that, yeah. given you've got the uniform and the medals mm. distracting the viewer yeah, from the qualities of the man. Hi, Joseph Harry. Hi, Nick. Nice to meet you. A Thank pleasure. You. Thank you for doing this. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, I hope I do you justice. <laughs> I'll just be buzzing around you like a bee, sort of just taking photos, um, doing some quick sketches. Yeah, hold that pose. <laughs> hold that thought. It's just, just getting the light at the moment um, seems to be the problem. So, you know, I think there's just a bit too much light coming in from outside. 
there's some photos that are starting to work and they, they're usable, but it's just trial and error. I'll just play around with it some more and just hopefully get some good shots out of it. If you can get that sort of cheeky inner smile you've got going. <laughs> Keep that, actually, that looks quite, looks quite interesting. I prefer that one more than the standard one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The standard one is sort of okay. quite stern. Yeah, quite well, it's sort of... more military. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, stiff. yeah. Have you noticed, like, a change from being awarded the, the VC? It more or less um, bring more positive things to my life. But the injury have affected my life. Yeah. The injury was between life and death. Yeah, definitely. I was in a coma for a very long time with less than 1% chance of survival. It's hard to comprehend what you must have sort of gone through. So it's sort of, I, 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 I'm sort for of speechless, me, really. Well, for me, the, the, the hardest part was the recovery side. Hmm. Um, what happened was easy, because it happened quick. <laughs> Bullet in my head, you know, Grenade in my face, damage my spine, it happened quick. Mm. And then it over. The recovery side, I mean, it's nine years on now, and I'm still not 100%. And I would never be 100%. I'm still fragile, so be careful with me. <laughs> <laughs> I think the main thing I'm going to take away today um, was how awesome it was to meet Sergeant Bahari. I managed to get a good a good couple of sort of shots. Um, but the fact that I've only got two weeks um, to do the image processing and the actual painting, that's going to be the problem. Two weeks to do the portrait, whoa, good luck. Yeah, um, I'm, yeah, I can't wait. I'm pretty excited to see the end result. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm with uh, Nick Lord and uh, Johnson Bihari VC and Colonel Wayne Harbour of the Princes of Wales' Royal Regiment. Uh, we're about to reveal the portrait. So you were asked to paint a formal portrait, but not in a formal way. That's quite a tricky one. How did you handle that? Um, well, it was a bit of a struggle straight from the word go, because he was in his blues. I love human. you picked up the jargon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> This is sort of captured the sort of the human side behind him, um, and not the soldier side, even though he was in his military uniform. So that was the challenge, and uh, I accepted it. So hopefully, um, it will work. Well, we're, we're all like desperate it. to find out if it did work. So would you like to? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Do it, Nick. Wayne, you said that you wanted the painting to embody the professionalism of the British soldier. Does it do that? <coughs> it does. Uh, more importantly, I think it was to get the man and the person. Um, I'm sure Johnson won't mind me saying he's become a bit of a celebrity, and the VC is the first thing people know about him. And, and he's a person. He's a very good person as well. And, and that's the bit I wanted Nick to try and capture. But I think he's got the face and particularly the eyes exceptionally well. And I'm really impressed by it. It is fantastic. And there's a spirit there, isn't it? You look like a thoughtful man. You know, we expect heroes to be a bit bang, bang. I actually remember sitting, trying to, you know, get my life together. And I could see that there, captured very, very well. Yeah. So, Nick, you took a lot of photographs. Um, you know, there are still people who think that's cheating. Uh, mm. How do you view it? It's a tool, um, and I had, I had four hours, um, and I needed to get as much, it was the one chance I had, so I needed to get as much material as possible. Did you do so sketches as well? I, yeah, I did some, and they were, oh, they were awful. <laughs> <laughs> Photos are much easier, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I've often thought that. Anyway, I think it's, it's really beautiful, well done. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, well thank done. you. It's fantastic. Cheers. Our fourth and final commission was completed by Selina Moat, our winner in Ireland. We sent Selina to paint Shami Chakrabarti, Director of Liberty. Here's what happened. It's going to be interesting to portray Shami Chakrabarti in a light where I can get across who she is as a person and what she represents as leader of Liberty. 
This will be the fourth time that I've sat for an artist. On each occasion, I've really learned something about how the artist sees me. So that's quite exciting, but a little scary at the same time. What we're trying to do here is, is not build the cult of the personality you understand um, or create more pictures of me. Um, what we're trying to do is to project something about human rights. Shami's been Liberty's director for just over 10 years um, and she's done some really fantastic work here and we'd like to commission um, a portrait of her. She's a very dynamic character often. I think some of her greatest sort of successes for the organisation have been her ability to sort of sit down with individuals, whether it's government ministers or other important influential people, and make the case as to why human rights values are so important. She has a great capacity for that sort of human connection. And OK, so you'd like something that's quite vibrant, quite contemporary feeling? Yeah, something that is um, light and that gives a kind of sense of her energy and the energy of the human rights movement. Where um, would the painting hang then once it's... We have, um, we have a corridor uh, that leads into the building. We have a number of key campaigns, key achievements sure. and victories hanging on that wall. And so that would be an obvious place for it to hang. For it. We're also celebrating our 80th birthday next year. Next February will be 80 years since we were founded. Wow. And we're planning on having an exhibition at the place where our founding members met um, back in 1934, and that's in St. Martin's in the, the Field. field. Yeah. It was the response to police action against the hunger march that came down from Manchester to London in 1932 to deliver a petition to the government of the day. So the National Council for Civil Liberties was set up in response to this, really as uh, the idea was to be the conscience of the nation. So it would be wonderful to be able to display the portrait wow, there as well. that'd be amazing. It's an incredible place to visit. Uh, there's so much history in there. Such an important part of liberty. If my portrait does appear in the exhibition here, um, that would be an incredible opportunity. So, wow, yeah. I would like to find out more about Shami Chakrabarti, the person. So I'm going to meet one of her good friends, Alison Foster QC. We're in the Rose Gardens in Middle Temple. Yeah. Tell me about the connection that you have with this place and that Shami Chakrabarti has with this place. Right, well, well, this is one of the inns of court. It is one of the educational establishments for the profession of barrister, and Shami, of course, is a barrister by training, as I'm a barrister. She came to our chambers as a pupil, which is where I first met her, I guess, almost 20 years ago. And has she changed much since um, those young days? Yes and no. I think that her natural charm is still there. Her natural bolshiness has okay. become crafted and useful and developed into the woman we see now. She's a very beautiful person uh -huh. and there's a, quite a vibrancy there and she's always been like that so okay. I would be sad if you didn't capture that but there's also a seriousness. Okay, has so a, you'd like the two kind of to balance off each not, other? Not difficult. <laughs> no, that doesn't seem like a challenge at all. <laughs> Hi, Shami. Lovely to meet Shami. you. In the four hours I have with her, I think I'm going to try out a few different colour variations with her and just try and chat to her as much as possible and get to know her and who she is. Strange sensations, because you're painting me and I'm also being filmed, and you're being filmed. It's almost sort of CCTV gone mad, isn't it? It is, it? isn't it? It's yeah. Sort of the point we've got. <laughs> We've got the sort of primitive surveillance with what you're doing, but you're also being watched yeah. and I'm being double watched. Yeah. And... I'm just um, doing a study, because I'd like it to be quite colourful. Well, that would be interesting. I'm not known for my colour. No, you're known for the... You wear the, black all the time. Black, yeah. Yeah. The Grim Reaper. <laughs> the Grim Reaper. Yeah. I think I'm going to keep it fairly small. I think it'd be great if it was small, and particularly if it's going to be small. here at Liberty. Can you imagine <laughs> how it would look yeah, if there was just this kind of floor-to-ceiling <laughs> sort of, you know, the great leader? Yeah. You know, it, it, you know, it's a bit too North Korean, isn't it? It is a bit. It's really just an experiment to redraw Jamie from a slightly different angle. I think we got her looking quite forlorn in the first one. So I'm going to try and get her looking a bit more... Jolly. Jolly in this one. 
I love the idea of the, the colour background substituting for the lack of colour in the person. <laughs> <laughs> Monochrome personality, but it's OK because we've got lots of colour going on behind. Are you ready for the second? Oh, that's quite different, isn't it? Well, I've cheered up a bit. <laughs> The contrast between the two studies is, is, is really dramatic and, and interesting. But of course, the big question is how is she going to choose to um, portray me in the final portrait? It's going to be interesting to see what I do in two weeks because I tend to work fairly quickly. The danger is that I could overwork it and lose the freshness. But yeah, it'll be, I'm looking forward to it. I'm joined here by Selena and also by Shanri Chakrabarti and by Isabella Sankey, who are both of Liberty. You said, Selena, that you were apprehensive of overpainting, painting too much. Yeah, because I'm used to painting quite quickly yeah. over a day or a couple of days. Um, so I had to kind of adopt a new technique almost. Um, but no, it was, it was a different experience for me to spend that much time on something. Let's unveil your portrait. Oh, Shami, well, how do you respond to that? I, I'm not someone who's very comfortable looking at, at my picture, but I'm, you know, reasonably comfortable with that. I think it's pretty honest. We're quite grim and worthy, but not too much. Obviously, the work that she does at the Liberty Group is incredible. Um, so when I did the sitting, I did kind of two versions of her. There was the version that I'd seen on TV, and then there was the version that Bella was kind of talking about. Um, <laughs> the kind of human chami, you know, who she is as a person. So I wanted to get the, the lawyer and the kind of human element of her across. And Isabella, do you think she's done that? Oh, absolutely. I think it's fantastic. Um, I was really keen that she captured Shami's humanity and the humanity of the, you know, the causes that we work for. So often human rights are depicted in a very grim way. Are you proud? I'm proud of Selena's work and um, she made me look vaguely human, <laughs> for which we will give her a prize of her own, whatever happens. <laughs> thank you all very much, Selena, thank you. So, there you have it. Four artists, four paintings. Uh, judges Taishan Schierenberg, Kate Bryan, Kathleen Soriano and Sandy Nairn now have one last opportunity to talk to the artists before they decide on a winner. Louis, this is a beautiful and unusual composition for a ballerina, especially when we saw you go to the quarter to look at the Degas. Um, it's also strange in that she's looking at us, and it's almost like she's saying, look how broken my body is, or the toll my body has taken to produce this beautiful, weightless art form for you to enjoy. And there's a kind of Eki Homer, you know, here is the broken woman. Did you have that I'm sense when so, you painted it? I'm so glad that you've said that. that, that <laughs> it's um, one of the central themes is of someone who's happy in their life and is prepared to take the punishment that yes. it inflicts on her body, but she wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. And she is still, she's living a girlhood dream and still she's never lost that. But it's come across beautifully and it's Thank a you. beautiful composition. Well Thank done, you. Louis. Thanks. Ewan, can I ask, how did you come to this pose when you've got such a dynamic figure, a jockey, and yet you had to paint him still? So how did you come to this? He's all jockey, and that's expressed by the, the attention going to the outfit. Um, but I think that... Um, and, and the look of determination is maybe conveyed in the arms folded and the distant gaze. Oh, I think um, some thought went into every aspect of it, and I hope it works. Did you find this landscape, that he was there in the landscape, or you found the landscape? The landscape's outside his house, but I think it's typical of the kind of rough terrain that he rides through every day. <laughs> Fantastic. Looks great. Thank you. Nick, I know you felt slightly intimidated by the uniform. It's such a powerful uniform and, and a powerful man. I think the window is a very interesting pictorial device for many reasons, and I just wondered why you chose it. It just sort of helps draw to the person as well. Um, and I wanted to sort of kind of try and capture that more the man, not the sort of the soldier. Um, I really, really like how it sort of turned out, and especially because I don't usually do backgrounds. So yeah. it sort of um, 
I think it, I think it, I think it works well and sort of helps draw you into him as well. Definitely, yeah. it's beautifully developed. Cheers, thank you. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Now, Selena, we, we know that you like working quickly, and here you had an opportunity to really engage with the sitter. I mean, what impact do you think that had on the painting that's resulted here? Um, it had a large impact because there was so many... There was two halves to the person that I was painting. Um, I wanted to get a figure that was important, forward-thinking, um, gazing out past you, I suppose, um, that had presence, but also had this very... Um, emotional kind of human content as well. And the scale of the head the in scale relation of the, to the shoulders? Yeah, I wanted it to be all about, you know, the brain, <laughs> conscious of the nation. Yeah, it was all about um, her mind. Great. Well done. surprised about although they're so varied in their style they're all very good at capturing the person they've painted yeah. I mean it's... they're all great portraits yes I thought you know the matching up as I mentioned before of, sub of subject with painter would suit you in, in a sense because I mm. thought it's quite exciting uh, he's he's yeah, an old-fashioned painter in a sense in a traditional style it's interesting because I think as he was sketching I sensed he was closer to McCoy yes, as he sketched yes. mm. and then if I'm mm. honest what I find in this is it's strong but it's somehow gone back a bit flat. Yes. We ought to talk a little bit about Selena, mm. because although you can see that she's still struggling, she's not quite got there. Um, she's produced an intensity. It, and yeah, look at Shami's face, yes. I and mean, we've got something pretty strong coming at us. She was my front runner after yeah. last. And I thought, my God, you, couldn't you have been a bit more ambitious? And then as I walked down the line, I came across Nick's. I actually got quite emotional. This man has been through uh, a terrible um, incident that's shredded him and it's in the painting mm. and he's been patched together again by Nick mm. in a sense. I mean, I think it's a great portrait. I, I worry a little bit about the contrived sense of the texture. So the, for me, it's just a slight question. Is that working? Is it kind of completing the portrait? I love the hands. Yeah. I love that like sense it. of the strong it's hands. Amazing. It's certainly, you know, it's very accomplished. It's very bold. But yes. also equally bold. You see. Yeah, I, I think, think I the think portrait Louis of Lauren is, by Louis is, is, is just, also a very bold composition. I think the feet are magnificent. All the things I love about it, it's all very symbolic. He bowled me over with the composition. Yeah. I mean, I, it was so refreshing and new. Um, and he's done a great portrait. Who's come on the most? I mean, you've seen it at the beginning and now at the end. Who's come Who's on the come most? On the... I think the one that I would like to win has come on the most and actually showing the most potential. And that's what I'm most excited about. Because I'm thinking the same, but I don't know who your person is. <laughs> I don't know who you're thinking about. The, but there's the, the question for me is the talent. If you're thinking about a Hilary Mantel portrait, it's got to be about potential. You want to see that growth. So we've said from the beginning that we were looking for someone who was exciting and yes. that really made... And I said I wanted someone who stopped me in my tracks. Artists are judges of reach the decision. The winner of the Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year is... Nick Lord. Congratulations and also our most heartfelt commiserations to Louis and Selena and Ewan. Well done, all of you. Thank you. So, 
Now, Mick, guess what my first question is going to be? How do you feel? Uh, all right. No, no. <laughs> Hasn't sunk in. Yeah. So it's, um... When you saw these, uh, the four new portraits tonight, did you think, I've got a chance here, or did you think, oh, my God? No, I think it all became a bit real then on how, how tough it was actually going to be. The competition is just amazing, so it's, it's awesome to have, to have won it, but yeah. Yeah, the four of you, it's been an absolute joy to watch your work and to see your work. It's really fantastic. I, I, I couldn't believe it. It was, it was amazing. It was so, oh, such a great feeling to sort of to sort of to be honoured with this sort of prize. Oh, it's amazing. I'm really thrilled for Nick. He's such a lovely guy. He deserves everything. Um, and his paintings. The last painting I think that he did for his commission was particularly uh, special. So he, he's well deserved winner. It's set me on a path again it's helped me reconnect with my painting, and it's been immensely valuable. And, and really, I'd say a life-changing experience. It's been an absolute thrill to take part in. I've really enjoyed every minute, well, almost every minute. I can't wait for the next challenge now. It's going to be, um, it's going to be really interesting painting Hilary Mantel and hopefully get a really good piece of work out of it that she's happy with as well. So I, I can't wait for that. It's going to be really good. Oh, what a night. And if you want to see the final 16 paintings for all of our finalists, come along to the National Portrait Gallery, where they'll be displayed from Friday the 13th of December to Thursday the 19th of December. Goodbye. Goodbye.